Hello and good afternoon. Welcome to New Forest Morphs. Thank you everyone for your love and support over the weekend. I think the last video we put out, Jared, was well received. Jared is our cameraman today and we're just going to complete the other um, pairings that we're planning for uh, today. But um, quite a few of the people out there appreciated the um, spreadsheets that we're producing for the planning and how important it is to actually do detailed planning. So what we're going to do today is we've got the new light box that Jared has invested in, which cost us about £70. And we are going to highlight a few of our um, pairings that we're going to be doing, but also looking at some of our grow-ons and see how they're doing. So I think the first thing we should do, Jared, is just, we talked about the um, various project last week, which was all to do with the cherry bomb. And it suddenly dawned on me that when we were talking about the cherry bomb, we've got other animals coming in the ranks that are going to add to that project. So what I thought we'd do is we just have a look at some of the other potential cherry bombs. Now the cherry bomb is a a red-eyed Lucy effectively, so you're going to get a white snake with red eyes. And there's lots of different ways of actually achieving it. We spoke about putting Ultramel to Ultramel, that, can, that then that can produce a cherry bomb once you get uh, either a Mojave or Bamboo added to that, so you get an act like Super with a visual Ultramel. You can do the same with albinos as well, so if you put an albino to an albino, say if you had an albino that was a Mojave albino and you had like a lesser albino, then you put them together and they produced a visual albino that was also had lesser and also had the Mojave in, that would also produce a cherry bomb. And of course there's 10 animals in the bell complex, which means you could apply other codons in there as well. What are the other codons besides Mojave and lesser? You've got bamboo, mm -hmm. special, is also in the genes. Now we actually have a boy called Crystal, a crystal which is a special called Jasper that's down here and we're going to talk about where we're going to put him. He won't be in the cherry bomb project but he's got another project that we're going to discuss later and the other ones we've got, Jack, can you think Bamboo. of it? Bamboo, yeah. Are there any other um, genes you can think of that go into the bell complex? The Mocha. Mocha. We've got Mocha. So we've got some Mocha babies behind us that we produced over a year ago. We're going to give you an update on them. They're 100% het for Ultramel, so we can use them as part of our Cherry Bomb project. And we've got two boys that are also uh, in the Purple Passion Clutch that we produced late last year. One of them is Houdini that escaped and came back. Now we have currently got two of the boys on Morph Market, um, so anyone there that wants to get into the project. They're 100% het for Ultramel, but they are, I think they are from memory, Phantom Mojaves. Yeah. So the Phantom is another gene that you can add to the Bell Complex, which you can also add to your Cherry Bomb projects. So for me, the value of those males is fantastic, because if you get a Bell that's got carrying either an Albino, Ultramel, um, and then some other ones, I think Rob Barraclough at Royal Balls was trying to shoot for a cherry bomb a couple of years ago. And I remember he was using the fire boy and girl that he, he had. I think he was using fire. And if you put a fire to a fire, you get a black eyed Lucy. <laughs> so the fire and the vanilla, I think the vanilla are also in, in the same area. Um, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think vanilla may also be in there. Um, you produce a black eyed Lucy, but if you actually bring in an albino visual to the fire. So if you had a fire albino and another fire albino and put those together and the fire and the fire came together and obviously we know the albinos would come together, you'd end up with a, uh, a red-eyed Lucy. So it goes from being a black-eyed Lucy to a red-eyed Lucy. So there's another option there that you've got on the fire to fire. So if anyone else has been shooting for a cherry bomb and you can think of any other um, recessive genes that you can use. So I certainly think you've got albino, ultramel. I'm guessing that things like um, the candinos, for example, the candy is also similar to albino. That may well also produce um, a similar effect of getting a red-eyed snake. I'm guessing that the lavender albinos will produce a cherry bomb as well. So if you have a lavender albino to a lavender albino, put those together with the bell complex coming in. That could also produce a red-eyed Lucy or possibly a purple-eyed Lucy because we do notice that with the lavender albinos, the eyes tend to be purple, don't they, Jared? So I think there's probably an awful lot of different combinations out there that we could look at. Um, but um, it's an exciting project and it looks as though we could, we're carrying more animals to do this project than we thought. So why don't we have a look at the cherry bomb first and then we'll look at the special. Then we're going to look at a leopard clown project that we've got. And there's I think, one other project that we wanted to show you so then we can wrap it up at that point. Let's have a look and see how these are doing, Jack. So last year, these are over a year old. This is Nesta. She is a Mojave Mocha girl. I think we'll pull her out. 
and see how she's, we've got the scales here, we'll weigh her first, then we'll put her in the light box and then we'll see. So this is a future girl, which is very valuable. And here she is, so she's got just a little bit of a yellow um, stripe about her. We'll just move her into there and let's see what the weight is coming in at. So she's currently just under 500, yeah? So she's just under 500 grams. So that's for about a year old, so it's not too bad. You can see how beautiful she, she is. She was a slow start. She was a slow starter. She's her sister's not, massive. Her sister's about twice that size, but she is looking very, very pretty. So let's see if we can get some nice photography in the light box on her. Beautiful blue eye, Jared. Isn't that just lovely? And when you put Mokka and Mojave together, you get quite a decent yellow fainted line going through the spinal um, on her back. Can you see that yellow line, Jared? Yeah. And that beautiful blue eye. So when she's up to about 1500 grams, we could plug in um, another bell boy. Now that could be, we've got three or four bell boys, haven't we, that are carrying het for ultra male genes, which is lovely. <coughs> But she is absolutely beautiful. What a beautiful animal. Uh, we'll have a look at her sister. So that's Nesta. We'll put her back, Jared. And she was liking to hide under her paper. So we'll just put her paper back in. And her water. Let's just top her up a little bit. She could do with a little bit more water. She quite likes coming out and having a little bit of fun. And we'll just put her back in the rack. And then we'll have a look at her sister Costa. She's in shed. Now the reason why we chose all these names is because the mocha is very much like a chocolate drink. I think mocha is very chocolatey and a dark Chocolate drink. coffee, isn't it? Chocolate coffee. We decided to use coffee names like Nesta and Costa. Costa. And I'll just take that tag off, Jad, so we know that we've shown her off. The next yellow tag is, now you'll see the difference in size. She's just about to shed out. So you'll see she's not as white as the other one. But she eats like an absolute trooper, this one, doesn't she, Jared? Yeah. There she is. You can see she's just about to shed. But she's just over a year old. And she's probably weighing about 800 grams, I'm guessing. Now, see if she'll let me take her from the back. We'll just weigh her in. I'm going to say 850, Jared. What have we got? 966. Twice the size of her sister. <laughs> she's been nailing food. Yeah, I think she nailed food from day one. <laughs> she eats in shed as well. <laughs> and uh, we'll just see, you'll see the difference when an animal's in shed compared to an animal that's not in shed. Let's look at the difference in the colors. So much different, isn't it? So certainly that lovely pure white color. She's um, going off on a tan color, but we'll put her back. Yeah, Don't probably doesn't like it in shed. Nah, we shouldn't really be disturbing her too much in shed, but we think we'll just show you the potential of this girl. So she's nearly a thousand grams, Jared. So she's mm -hmm. ready to go into the next size rod. So the other thing is when you're planning your projects, you've also got, we've got some slots down the bottom here. We need to start moving them across. When they hit 850 to 900, we'd like to move them across, don't we, Jared? And so she's got to be a priority moving into her next rod. We'll let her shed out comfortably in here. One of the things I find, Jared, is that we have moved girls before and boys at 750, 800 and they've gone off food because they didn't like this slightly larger. So a bull python likes to be in a confined space. <laughs> they, they feel more confident feeding, they feel more confident overall. Um, so what we'll do is we'll move her in and give her a hide and then she'll be able to feel that security of the hide even if she's in a slightly bigger um, rub that she can grow in. So there's two potential projects. While we're here, let's have a look at the three other bales we produced last year, Jazz, which are down here. We'll start with the girl. Oh, the purple passions? Yeah, these are the purple passions. You see how they're doing. So this one here is eating quite well. We haven't named this one yet, but we need to give it a name, Jared. And um, I think the last time you sexed it, you didn't see any hemipenes coming out. No. <clears throat> but look how beautiful she is. Each shed, she's producing more purples. See how beautiful she is, Jared? Lovely girl, isn't she? Now what we can do is we can put this in the light box so you'll get the full beauty of her without us disturbing her from her position. And there she is. 
I reckon she's got to be about, say, 500 plus, do you think? Yeah. That's not bad, because they were late last year, weren't they? They were born in probably September, October time. Yeah, I reckon she's about four or five hundred. Four to five hundred. So she's doing really well. So she'll be part of our future projects going forwards. And then her two brothers, which are available if anybody wants to get in the project, are this guy here, which Emily named after cheese. <laughs> Let's have a little look at him. He's in the shed. Is he going into shed? Mm -hmm. oh, I'll tell you what. We're We'll show him that way, we won't disturb him, we'll just show you where he is. So he's on Wolf Market. I can't remember what price we put on him, but I think he's somewhere close to £300, I think. So if anyone's interested in getting into the Cherry Bomb project, this guy will be able to breed probably in the next six months because he's getting close to 500 grams. <coughs> so <clears throat> a very valuable asset to have in anyone's collection. And then we've got a second brother here, which we called Houdini. And he's bigger actually, but just look how beautiful he is, Jad. He's not far off breedable size. And Jad feeds the hatchlings. How's he feeding, Jad? Ravenously. Ravenously. So you shouldn't have any problems feeding him. So that lovely blue eye, but with the purple passion, they've got that lovely purple head stamp. And as they shed out, you'll see more and more patterns on the body, Jad, purple patterns. So we're having a bit of a bell complex day today, aren't we? And I reckon he's getting close to 500 grams as well. Maybe maybe a bit more. <clears throat> so again, give it six months. He will be potentially breedable. And uh, he's carrying the Phantom and the Mojave gene. 100% for Ultra. 100% het for Ultra male of these. So he's carrying that all important recessive gene as well. He's only half a gene away from being a cherry bomb. Yeah, if he was a visual ultramel, he'd be a red-eyed uh, Lucy. So I think that covers those three. So now that leads us nicely onto our special boy, who's a special Mojave, which is in the Bell Complex. So it's all about Bells today, Jared. Let's bring him out, Jasper. Now we want to get, we bought him for several reasons. We think special pieds are lovely. He's carrying 100% het for pied. So let's have a little look at him. And we also want to get him into the clown project as well. Yes. So there we go. So there's Jasper. It's beautiful. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful animal. I don't mean necessarily need to put him in the light box, Jack, because I think he's pretty bright without going in the <laughs> light box. But he's probably weighing about a thousand grams now. And he's a special Mojave. Special Mojave, which creates what they call a crystal in the bell complex. So we won't disturb him much more. Now he doesn't actually have a blue eye. Have you noticed his eyes, are they blue? They look more greeny blue to me. And most of the bells would normally have a blue eye. But I think there's... They're grey, aren't they? They're grey. They're kind of a grey blue eye. But he's recently shed out, so he's looking really, really good. So what the question is, what we're going to put into, Jad? You are keen to get this special into our collection special pieds going on so let's find out the pied girl we we're going to put into so we want to put into a visual pied girl yeah prove him out that mayu you wanted to put into mayu so she this one is a yellow belly cinnamon pied let's have a look at her and see how she's doing and see whether she's going to be big enough to be paired this year so do you want to have a little look jad she's just shed out or is she going she's just about to shed she's just about to shed you won't see her at her best. She's got lovely yellow markings on her mouth. Can you see the yellows, Jad? Yeah. And that could well be the yellow belly coming in with the cinnamon. So the cinnamon normally gives you a very low white or uh, a high, a high white um, pied. But look at the lovely browns in her. She's got a lovely combination of brown and yellows in there. So. We're hoping it's yellow belly. We're not 100% certain. So. The colours make me think it is. Yeah. And I'm reckoning how much is she. She's got a dark have? ring. Do you want to weigh her, Jay, and see what she weighs? Because I'd like to know what she weighs. I think she's probably about 13. About 1300? 1485. Wow, so she's not far off then, Jay. Not far off at all. Beautiful girl. <clears throat> and she was sisters with Atlas, wasn't she? Yeah. And she came from a yellow belly pastel mum. 
that went to the boy. The daddy was the cinnamon pie boy Elvis, who by the way is shut out and looking absolutely lovely. And I have a quick look at daddy. We've not even plugged him in this year at all, have we? So is he out of shed or is he going into shed? I think he's just come out of shed, has he? Yeah, he's out of shed. Just out of shed. Proven boy. Very dark. He's responsible for a lot of our pides. <laughs> he's been a stud of a boy. And that's the thing about breedings. What I was going to say to everyone out there is that you do take more of a risk when you use a new boy. <laughs> and I think that's one of the reasons why we had such a poor season this season is because we were experimenting with so many new girls and boys. They weren't ready. <laughs> So of course our anticipation was really happy, excited, we think, cool, we're going to hit some amazing projects. The reality is they didn't go. And I think what we have to be appreciative of is when you're in this hobby, it takes time for the boys to mature. Not every boy will go within a year. Some take two, three, four years. We've got one boy, which we're going to introduce you to now, that we've had for four years. That hasn't even locked yet, but we're going to still try and work with him. We want to prove him out. He's a beautiful leopard boy. Let's have a look at him and see what we've got here, Jack. Because I think he shed out also this week. So this is Mowgli. Now Mowgli, he's very shy, isn't he? He was quite a shy feeder, quite a slow feeder. But we've had him for what, four years, Jared? Yeah, it's got to be getting on for that. And we bought him. He's got an M on his head for Mowgli, have you noticed that? Oh, even better. So what I found, Jared, is that um, with him, we wanted to get Leopard into our clown projects, we wanted to get Leopard into our pie projects. But the reality was, he wasn't up for locking, was he? No. He hasn't locked yet. So either he's a bit shy, doesn't know what he's doing, or he just needs time. But I've heard lots of stories where certain boys just will not lock and they've had them for years, Jared. So mm. there's no guarantee. You can spend an awful lot of money on a boy. Yeah. Say you spend £3,000 on a stud boy and he doesn't want to lock. <laughs> you, you do think to yourself, my goodness me, you get excited about it. But if, it doesn't lock, if he doesn't lock, then you've got to have reliable backup boys if you want to produce something. So I think this is the other game plan, is we know the reliable boys from the past and we've got to have them standing by to help further our pro progress. Or the other option is, rather than just specialising having one boy, Miguel, last year, he was banging out so many snakes that he was running out of his boys, and some of his boys weren't going, and others were performing particularly well, but he couldn't stretch them any further. And he said to himself, the amount of boys I've sold that I wish I didn't sell. And we got very lucky, because we ended up uh, missexing a couple of our ultramar boys, and we ended up having a boy called Nova that we thought was a girl. <laughs> it's proved out to be the... Uh, father of the clutch last year so you know the um, cinnamon girl that you got we've got some 100% hair cinnamon ultra males and that was lucky really because we missexed it and we needed an, an extra male to go into our projects and I said to Jared let's not be too speedily selling our males the males are very valuable because you need to get that balance right and they normally say a two to one ratio is a good ratio people get away with three to one but two to one between boys and girls and we've got a two to one ratio here is probably a safer bet than going three to one, just in case one or two of your boys don't do the business. So, who are we gonna put Mowgli to, Jared? Because we wanna get the leopard into pied. Mm -hmm. So, we were gonna put him into, now what is he, is he 100% pied? He's 100 clown, 50 pied. 100% clown, so because he's 100% clown, we're gonna put him to this girl here, which is cool. I can never pronounce the name, Jared. How would you pronounce her name? Uh, I'm not sure. Hokoyo, uh, Hokoyo. It's an African name given to us by one of our subscribers. How is she doing? Let's have a little look and see how big she is. She's a 100% head clown, but she's got a ways to go, I would say, Jared. Yeah. Would you agree? I think she's probably about 12, 13. Yeah. So she's on our focused <clears throat> feeding with Maltese, because of course Maltese give them, if you feed your animals, let's say you're 100 or 200 away from your target. If you use a multi. They can take a multi in and digest that easier than they can a small rat, but they retain more of the um, nutrients of a multi than they do on a small rat, which means that your girls, even though they're eating a smaller meal, probably a little bit more often than a small rat, will retain and digest quicker and build solid muscle and not become fat and overweight. So there's a strategy here to use the multis to finish off your girls, to get them up to where you need them without putting them under too much strain. It's just a little tip that I've used. Now we've only got a few more minutes left in the video, so there was one other girl that he's going to, Jad. Which one was it? Was it going to be... That was the 100% hep clown. And the other one we were going to put into was a... Was it a, a visual pie? Pie, yeah. yeah. It might even be Mayu, and he might be going to a different one. Okay. 
So anyway, we're going to be using a pied to prove out him. So we want to get cinnamon in, uh, we want to get leopard into pied as well. So that's another one. And then the last one, Jared, is we've got was uh, the Bongo project. Now, the Bongo project, she just shut out today, I think it was, Jan, you cleaned mm -hmm, the animals. She used to be very fiery. She might let me pick her up, or you might need to just go in and we won't disturb her, but she weighs about 1,600 grams. There's the Bongo girl. So her name 